Hello everyone. In this video lecture, in the paper 3, called of third semester, we shall study regarding the topic tadpole of Hurtmanian. So in the previous session, we have discussed regarding the morphological aspects of uh, that uh, aspects of herd mania. Okay, so in this class, we shall see regarding the tadpole of herd mania. Okay, so a brief uh, recap regarding the herd mania. So if you remember what we have discussed in the previous session, herd mania is a sedentary form, and we know the systematic position, all those things, and the body is uh, laterally a compressed organism and uh, depending on the type of specimen it is pinkish or yellowish brown in color okay so all these details like uh, body is divided into body proper and food and having the uh, two siphons branchial and atrial siphons and uh, respective apertures and the body covered by uh, test or tunic all these points we have uh, discussed and the foot acts as a balancing organ and also organ of attachment and very importantly concerned with our topic today it is the sexual behavior of herdmania herdmania is an hermaphrodite and it has external fertilization and indirect development see students here the indirect development means the development includes a larval form the larval form of uh, herdmania it is known as the tadpole larva, right? Now, this tadpole larva undergoes indirect development to form and degenerate adult. Now, we are using the word retrogressive metamorphosis here. Metamorphosis means the developmental changes that occur in the larval form to become adult. Now, why we are using the word retrogressive here? Because the larval form is more active, it is motile, and it consists of many uh, called characters. And these characters that are present in the larval form, they, de they get degenerated and forms a simple sedentary adult. Because of this uh, retrogressive uh, development, the term retrogressive metamorphosis has been used. And the adult is degenerate loses many structures and of course develops some adult structures but it loses the major structures that were present in the larval form and it becomes a sedentary adult and as we all know well the fertilization in case of herdmania is external now after the fertilization once the zygote is formed now the zygote undergoes cleavage right the multiple mitotic divisions that occur in the zygote is what is known as the cleavage now the cleavage in case of herdmania zygote is holoblastic cleavage that means the cleavage furrow that starts from one pole moves on to the other pole forming the distinct blastomeres separate blastomeres are formed there is a complete division and the blastomeres that are formed all of them are not of equal size there are micromeres and the macromeres now because of that it is known as the unequal division and it's because the protostome, the uh, embryonic development in case of herdmania, it is determinate. What do you mean by determinate? The blastomeres that are formed, their fate gets decided uh, early, right? So, so that is why it is known as the determinate cleavage. Now, after fertilization, eight hours after fertilization, the... Uh, the egg of the zygote formed hatches out into a free swimming larva. Now, larva after three, four hours of hatching, it becomes geopositive. That means it moves towards the um, ground and it becomes photonegative. It starts moving away from the light. So, students understand here if it is becoming sensitive to some stimuli, that means it is well equipped with the sensory organs. So, it starts moving towards the ground and move, moves away from the light and it becomes sluggish. Now, the tadpole of herdmania is formed after 10 to 12 hours of fertilization, as we have seen, 8 to 10 or 12 hours, depending on the environmental conditions, we can see the emerging of the tadpole larva. This larva that is formed after 10 to 12 hours 
it is transparent minute and it measures around 1.2 millimeters long and 0.3 millimeters wide and it is highly motile it's a very very active uh, organism in contrast to that of the adult which is a sedentary form now the larval body is covered by again the testar tunic you can see the the testar tunic is secreted by the ectoderm that is present in the larva okay so when you look at the structure of the larva the larva is oval and from the oval head the larva has a oval head and from the oval head there is a trunk which is pointing towards the tail so that is the structure of or uh, that whole larva of cardmania you can see this is the head region this is the tapering uh, trunk region ending with a tail so you can see the presence of the endostyle here very important organ and here you can see the presence of the adhesive papillae now the uh, there is presence of the mouth leading into pharynx and pharynx which opens out to the atrium okay and you can see the presence of heart surrounded by the pericardium stomach present here and very important to observe there is a presence of notochord from the axial rod of the uh, tail and there are mesenchymal cells and fringing fringing the uh, tail part there is a tail fin that is present in the tadpole larva so all these uh, details we shall see one by one now so the first part of the tadpole larva is head or trunk region and this the head or the trunk region it measures about 0.3 mm okay so it is cylindrical structure measuring about 0.3 mm now the head region as i have shown you in the previous uh, picture so this part now there are what are known as the adhesive papillae stalked adhesive papillae two dorsolateral and when one ventrolateral in position so we have seen these adhesive papillae because it becomes the geopositive start moving towards the ground the larva has to get attached to the ground that is the reason why it is adhesive papillae now these papillae are made up of secretory ectodermal cells and they help in attachment during the metamorphic changes now the dorsal part of the trunk is oval hollow so there is a presence of so this part we are talking about at the dorsal part of the trunk there is a presence of oval hollow uh, structure known as the sensory vesicle or the brain so this part of the larva so this is what is known as the sensory vesicle or it is the brain of the larva now so once we see this so let us enlarge this sensory vesicle and see so if you enlarge this sensory vesicle part so towards the anterior region there is presence of uh, conical extension known as the cerebral cone this is the cerebral cone and this is the sensory vesicle you can see in the sensory vesicle there are two ocelli that are present there are two ocelli present and there is one autocyst okay so the sensory vesicle consists of two ocelli one posterior ocelli and one anterior ventral ocellus and there is presence of another sensory structure known as the autocyst okay so autocyst and behind the uh, sensory vesicle there is presence of mass of uh, nerve cells known as the visceral ganglion so this is the structure of the uh, brain or the sensory vesicle of tadpole larva now you can see the ocelli as uh, the name itself says it is a photoreceptor and the autocyst or the autolith helps in maintaining balance of the equilibrium so towards the anterior region as we have seen there is a conical mass of cells known as the cerebral cone right and behind the sensory vesicle there was visceral ganglion now from the visceral ganglion continue to the tubular nerve cord up to the tip of the tail now you can see here the 
ganglion that was present visceral ganglion in this point you can see this is the visceral ganglion it is extended up to the tip of the tail forming the nerve cord right so that is what they are saying the visceral ganglion is continued into the tubular nerve cord till the tip of the tail okay now the mouth so let us go back to the picture so if you look at this is the point we are talking about there is a mouth leading into the pharynx the pharynx consists of the six stigmata they are opening out through the atrium now you see here the pharynx the mouth is situated anterior dorsally leading into the rudimentary alimentary canal now the pharynx has well developed the endostyle so this endostyle with six stigmata this is the structure i'm talking about this is the endostyle the endostyle consisting of six stigmata right uh, arranged in two uh, rows you can see there six stigmata are present so the endostyle has six stigmata the atrium surrounds the pharynx and opens to the mid dorsal atrial aperture as i have shown you there is a heart so we have seen this so this part so it consists of heart heart is uh, surrounded by pericardium uh, or as we have seen in that picture will lies below the pharynx now uh, there are a mass of cells uh, these cells we are talking about so they are known as the mesenchymal cells scattered all over the body they are present all over the body beneath the ectoderm and also in the mass near the posterior region of the trunk so okay so they are scattered all over the body they are present in a mass uh, near the posterior region of the trunk so let us after the head or trunk region let us come to the tail part of the uh, tadpole larva so as we have seen in the picture it is a transparent structure and what is the function of it the function of it is it is a locomotory organ so as we know well the larva is a motile organism so it has to swim through the water so that is why it is presence of a locomotory organ tail fringe by a tail fin it measures about 0.9 mm now the notochord is present in the tail uh, extended from head to the tail region from the axial skeletal rod and it is restricted only to the tail part so you can see the notochord so in this picture you can see the notochord present here this is not present in the head or the trunk region but it is extended throughout the tail region so notochord is extended throughout the tail region now what it is made up of the notochord is made up of a row of turgid vacuolated cells and just above the notochord there is a hollow nerve cord as we have seen from the visceral ganglion it is extended up to the tip of the tail now the tail also contains strong muscle bands so let us see so these are the bands we are going to talk about the tail also contains strong muscle bands and these bands are similar to the myotomes that are present in the higher vertebrates now having all these structures the larva sinks to the bottom that attaches as i told you it is geopositive and photonegative sinks to the bottom and get attached to a suitable substratum with the help of adhesive papillae okay and undergoes rapid degeneration or retrogressive metamorphosis forming a degenerate sedentary adult so okay this is a details available regarding the um structure of the tadpole larva starting from the fertilization till the um, attachment of the larva to the substratum so once the attachment of the larva is done they start retrogressive metamorphosis regarding that let us discuss in the next session so brief uh, uh, recap 
regarding the tadpole larva. So Hardmania has indirect development through tadpole larva. Head region, trunk region, and tail region is there. The head region consists of adhesive papillae, sensory vesicle, and cerebral cone. The alimentary canal is rudimentary. Endospile is present attached to the pharynx and consisting of six stigmata. And the tail extended conically and presence of uh, fringing uh, tail fin. It is a strong locomotory organ. After the larva attaches to the substratum, it starts undergoing the drug as a metamorphosis. So let us see a few MCQs based on this topic. The first question is, consider the following statement with respect to herdomania. Fertilization is internal and development is direct. Is it correct in the uh, herd mania? Let us check. Second point, the fertilization is external. The development is indirect. Which is correct? You can answer it. Right answer is which statement is correct? Only statement 2 is correct. Right? So let us go to the next question. In the tadpole larva of herd mania, so it's a question based on the details of herd mania. Larva, tadpole larva. The notochord notochord is extended throughout the length of the body is it correct let us see the head or trunk has a autocyst which functions as a photoreceptor organ okay so both the sentences you just go through observe word by word and give me the answer the right answer is statement one and two both are wrong right so none of them are the head or trunk, the third question is, the head or trunk part of the tadpole of herdmania consists of, what are the details uh, that are present in the head region? Is there adhesive papillae? Is there sensory vesicle, cerebral cone, notochord and nerve cord? What is present? So the answer is 1, 2, 3. You know very well, notochord and nerve cord, they are present only in the tail region, right? Okay, so these are the few questions available. So this is the reference for this video lecture. Thank you all for watching.